the line. Fish on the line. Oh, shoot. Turning here. That's a classic catch one on the turn right there. Let's see here. Net's way up there. He way back to that. that was 15 feet deep on an FHS trolling grub, a chartreuse grub teamed with a blade. Um, working along about 15 feet deep. I'm seeing a lot of marks out here. Not fighting too much, but we caught some really big fish today, so I ain't taking no I ain't taking no chances. I ain't taking no chances at all. So oh 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 keep pulling right there. Let's see, I'm gonna kind of troll my way out of here. There comes the top shot right there. I better get this net ready. Let me get the net. Get the net ready. Ready for action. Kind of playing possum a little bit. Oh, there he goes. There he goes. There he goes. Oh, 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 oh. I don't think he's huge, but I think he's nice. I think he's a nice one. I think he's a good one. I think he is that. He's going back in. I'm out here experimenting. Caught some fish on worms today, but uh, it's hard for them to lay off that FHS grub, particularly the brighter colored ones. We got one on an orange grub today. Oh, nice fish, nice fish. We got one on an orange grub today, and this one is on a chartreuse grub. Whoa, let me steer him over here. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Now we're talking. Now we're talking business. Come here, you. Ugh. Come here. Oh, God, it's hard by myself. There we go. There we go. Hoo, hoo, hoo. On the grub. Don't worry about that rod. We'll just break it. Oh, nice. Nice, nice, nice. Oh, man. I'm all discombobulated here. Look at that. On that chartreuse grub. Let me get this rod squared away here. I want to get this guy back in the water. There's that trout right there. What a beauty. Big, chunky rainbow trout here at Collins Lake. Let's get him revived. The net back in. Water here today, guys, 49 degrees. So you got the luxury of, you know, getting the fish out of the water a little bit, getting them revived, take good care of them. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Let's talk about trolling soft plastic grubs for trout. Um, grubs are hands down one of the most versatile baits you can employ. Whether we're talking about, you know, bright colored three inch grubs like that, that's pretty much the standard length. Um, bait fish colored three inch grubs or T tiny micro grubs like this, grubs are just flat out trout killers. Now I fish grubs quite a bit but I don't think I fish them enough. That's how deadly grubs are. Uh, we've already landed a 10 pound fish this season on a bright red FHS grub. And we had that teamed with a mini willow leaf dodger. Now, in one way, you can think of grubs in the same way that you think about a threaded worm. It's a great presentation to use when the fish are kind of off the bite, when you want something that you control slowly, when you want something that you control naked by itself, something you can team with a four inch blade, a six inch blade, or even one of my, uh, even one of my turbo flashers, or a set of standard, you know, gang troll flashers with a bunch of rotating metal blades. You can use grubs for all that kind of work, but you can also troll grubs faster. You know, hands down, my target speed with grubs is about 1.8 miles an hour, but uh, you could take them all the way up to three miles an hour. The grubs are effective because well, when a fish bites them, they're soft, they're realistic, they feel like a bait fish, they feel like something that the trout wants to hang on to. That's one factor. Um, they work very well with scents. They absorb scent. They hold on to scent very well. Coat a grub with um, Procure Super Gel. It's staying in place. It adds that scent dimension to the bait. And, uh, you know, let's face it, grubs have an extremely seductive crippled action. If you look at a grub, the tail is all on one side. So no matter what kind of hook you rig your grub on, you're going to get a rotating action. That's why it's so important if you're fishing grubs naked to team them with a rudder or at least a trolling swivel so that they don't twist up your line. Now I like to enhance 
that twisting rolling action even more by rigging my grubs on a slow death hook. That just adds to the roll. It adds to the vibration that the grub you know, puts out. It adds to that, that crippled bait fish impression that the grub already gives. And uh, I think it just takes you know, grub trolling to the next level. By all means, you know, there's really no wrong hook you could troll grubs on. When I first started trolling grubs, I was uh, rigging them on a number six eagle claw bait holder hook. So there's no wrong hook to rig a grub on, but my preferred hook these days is the Mustad um, slow death hook just because it enhances that roll. Let me show you how I put a grub on the hook. Let me grab a cool looking one here. I'll grab a chartreuse one, um, just like the one I caught that fish on in the beginning of this video. Let me grab a, a leader with a slow death on it. Okay, I'm back. Here's a slow death hook rigged on a 10 pound uh, fluorocarbon leader. I got a loop in the top end. This is the same exact leader I would use for rolling a night crawler on, putting a gulp worm on. Um, you know, I've got them pre-rigged. I've got them, got them all wrapped on a, on a pool floaty. So I'm ready to rig up whether I'm going with the gulp, the worms, or the grubs. Now, I've shown this before on the channel. What you want to end up with when you rig a grub is you want the bend of the hook, the bend right there, you want it to be in opposition to the tail of the grub, okay? You want it coming out the opposite side of the grub as the tail. So I just take my slow death hook, just like that. I find the center point on the back of the grub. I insert the tip of that hook right into the center of the grub, and I just slide that grub right on down the hook. And where I want that hook point to pop out, I want it to pop out right about here, but on, on this side, right where the tail connects to the grub's body. And uh, my goal is to get it on there nice and straight, bring it around and then pop that hook out. You can see the hook coming out right there, see that? Right where that tail connects. And then I just work the grub onto the hook and I hook my finger, that's okay, right there. Now. That looks a little wonky. Don't worry about how it looks. That is an absolutely deadly way to rig a grub. See, the hook is in opposition to the tail. Grubs feel so soft and so realistic, and they taste so realistic if you add some Procure to them. And when the trout comes in, it feels like something to eat, and they just suck the whole bait in, and you typically get a really good purchase with your hook. You've got an open, uh, an open band hook like that, a J style hook, not a treble hook. So you're getting maximum hooking. And uh, lots of times you'll land a very high percentage of the fish you hook on grubs as compared to the number of fish you land on spoons or Rapalas or something like that, that has treble hooks, which have a, a smaller bend. You know, I always say a J hook like that, it's gonna land more fish than a treble hook. A treble hook may, may hook more fish, but the J hook is gonna put more of them into the net. Um, that's really about it as uh, as far as grubs go. Um, actually, though, we should talk about one more aspect, and that is color. And, uh, you know, my, my philosophy, and your philosophy may differ from mine, but my philosophy is I always start off with the natural stuff. Let me grab my grubs again here. So there's the grub on the slow death rigged up. Okay, I'm back. So, you know, my philosophy is I like to go with the natural stuff first. If I'm at a, at a lake that features shad or pond smelt, I'm gonna run with something like that, something smoke colored. Maybe uh, if I got a high sky and I got pretty good clarity, I might go with my, my firecracker grub. I've had really good luck with these up at Lake Shasta um, when the trout are feeding on shad. Those are great. Here at Collins Lake, the water's always off color, but it's extra off color right now. So I was running that chartreuse grub the other day and it worked out. I caught several fish on that over about a three day span. And uh, this is another one I like to run early and late in the day and when the water is stained. I've had good luck on the red grub. So basically start off natural, then play with bright colors. If you're up in the high Sierras, you know, at a bug lake, a, a lake where the fish, you know, make their living feeding on insects, um, it makes sense to probably start off with a bright color grub, something that's going to catch the fish's eye, something that's going to make them curious and kind of draw them in and uh, hopefully close the deal. So bottom line is I love trolling with grubs and I offer, let me show it to you here. I don't know if I if I can show it to you very well. This is one of my grub kits right here. I'm just gonna kind of hold it up like that. It's one of my grub kits here. We've been, we've been taking grubs out of here for a while. Uh, my grub kits are the best value in grub fishing 
hands down. They come with 160 grubs in the kits. Uh, you get glow grubs, just about every color you can imagine. You get a few different sizes. You get some accessories to rig them with. Uh, you get some action discs, some hooks. Um, some swivels, stuff like that. So if you want to up your grub fishing game, first thing you need to do is get some grubs, you either get mine or get somebody else's, and then get out on the water and get them wet. Um, as I said, you know, I fish grubs a lot, but I don't think I fish them enough because when I start fishing them seriously, they produce a lot of fish, fish of all sizes, you know, as I said, this grub right here, red grub like that, it produced a 10 plus pound trout for us. Uh, I think that was in November. It was on one of our first uh, fall trolling trips up here at Collins Lake. Anyway, that's about all I got to say. Just know that grubs are extremely versatile. Any situation where you would reach for a threaded worm, you can reach for a grub and you can also play with grubs at higher speeds, match them up with spoons, hit that 2.2 all the way up to three mile an hour trolling speed range and uh, they will produce results. Get them in the water and give them a chance to perform. You'll thank me later. I'm Kel Kellogg. If you're looking for gear, including my grub kits, you know where to go, fishhuntshoot.com. Thanks a bunch guys, I'll catch you next time.